The monsters that live in the diverse land of Middle Earth are numerous. These monsters interact with key protagonists where they sometimes have a significant impact on the events of Middle Earth. The Ionar, Ilivata, and other world creating beings are not included in this list of top 10 most powerful monsters in the Middle Earth universe. Orcs and goblins frequently ride the frightening wogs. They resemble enormous wolves and it is possible to tell them apart from other species due to their size and head form. Unlike their wolven ancestors, wogs can be saddled like horses since they are highly intelligent. The species is extremely strong, hefty and muscular, and it has sharp fangs and a brain that enable it to launch attacks on demand in addition to simply hunting food. They assaulted the company in Moria in the Fellowship of the Ring, and they attacked the caravan retreating from Edoras to Helm's Deep in the Two Towers. They also made a fleeting appearance in the Return of the King's Siege of Minas Tirith, most notably at the Battle of Pelennor Fields. The Hobbit, an unexpected journey, gave us our last opportunity to witness Wogs in action when Azog and his Orc army used them to drive Gandalf, Thorin and the Dwarves to the edge of the cliff and up the trees. It's unclear whether Wereworms exist in original writings or if they were mistaken for wingless dragons. The animals, known to the Hobbits as Wereworms, resided in the desert to the east of the Shire. The animals were featured in The Hobbit and the Battle of the Five Armies by Peter Jackson. Giant worm-like creatures, known as the Wereworms, with jaws so strong they could eat through stone and dirt like butter. They would undoubtedly rank among the strongest and most dangerous creatures in Middle-earth, but since they rarely venture outside of the tunnels and subterrane, their contact with other species is quite infrequent. They were employed by Azog to construct tunnels connecting Erebor and Gundabad, although they never participated in actual combat. Although Legolas refers to these creatures as Oliphants when they first appear in the Two Towers and again in Return of the King, these creatures are more commonly referred to as Mummakiles. Mummakiles are virtually enormous, extremely intelligent elephants with two sets of tusks and can reach an incredible height of 90 feet. The Haradrim, a particular race of men who were a member of Sauron's evil army, are virtually the only ones that utilise them in combat. With a single swipe of their long, strong tusks, which are frequently covered in spikes or barbed wire, the Oliphants may obliterate an entire troop of horsemen. They are extremely dangerous creatures because you can hardly hurt them. In addition to having long, skin-covered wings, extended necks and enormous teeth, they have horrible screech that can be heard throughout the lands. Felbeats are actually incredibly powerful on their own, despite the fact that they often follow the orders of their masters, the Nazgul. They are incredibly skilled hunters and are swift, strong and agile. They would likely be even higher on the list if it weren't for the fact that they have a single easy weakness, sunlight. No, they don't turn to stone like trolls, but intense sunlight can have an impact on them and can even hurt them, as we've seen when Gandalf marched towards them and cast light beams in the direction in front of Minas Tirith. There are many enigmatic creatures, but the Watcher in the Water stands out as the most enigmatic of them all. The creature lurking in the water in front of the Mines of Moria entrance is the only example of it we've ever seen. With almost 20 tentacles, the creature has a kraken-like appearance. The species or entity really has no name. All that is known of it is the Watcher of the Water. As the Fellowship entered Moria, it seized Frodo, and by entering the Mines of Moria and running away, the entire group merely managed to survive the behinds. The Watcher would undoubtedly be ranked even higher if we knew more about it, but perhaps the creature's mystery adds to its brilliance. The Great Eagles are enormous, sentient eagles who have fought for good throughout history. Only one great eagle, Thorndor, the Lord of the Eagles, ever achieved the species' maximum size of 180 feet in wingspan. He battled Uncle Agon, the biggest dragon ever in history, due to his size and strength. Gwainhir, the son of Thorndor, was also essential to winning the War of the Ring. 
since he repeatedly fought off fell beasts and Nazgul in addition to saving Frodo and Sam after they destroyed the One Ring on Mount Doom, and Gandalf after his battle with the Balrog. Even if fell beasts and dragons are more powerful than the eagles, they are by far the fastest, and they knew how to take advantage of that. The large creatures that frighten many people are the enormous spiders. There is complete brood of the animals that live in the trees of Mirkwood in addition to Shelob, the enormous guardian of Sirith and Gol Pass. The spiders' non-lethal stings can paralyse their prey by trapping them in webs, powerful enough to hold them. On their individual quests, Frodo and Bilbo face the beasts, and their sword stings save the day in both occasions. When Bilbo wielded the sword against the spider, the spider yelled, It stings! giving the sword its name. The giants would unquestionably be at the top of the list if they were aggressive beings who cared about little conflicts among the living things. It is not known where the giants can be killed or injured. The giants are essentially simply enormous mountains when they are asleep, and you'd never know they were even alive. The two giants were depicted in the Hobbit playing around and hurling enormous rocks at one another, which were large enough to instantly smash a small hamlet. The giants in the books only had a height of up to 100 feet. For the Hobbit, Peter Jackson reinvented them as enormous mountains that had absolute no interest in being traversed by Bilbo and the dwarves. Despite being right up there, the formidable Balrogs aren't the most powerful creatures. Just like Gandalf and the other wizards, Balrogs were originally Maya. They were angelic beings made of Valar to maintain the balance between good and evil. However, Morgoth corrupted certain Maya, transforming them from angels into demons. There were not many Balrogs left when the War of the Ring began, but one was still present in the minds of Moria. The notorious Dwarven King was killed by Durin's Bane, the Balrog Gandalf faced in the Fellowship of the Ring. Dragons are arguably the most ferocious and cunning animals that have ever existed. During the First Age, there were a great deal more of them, but by the Third Age, Smaug was regarded as the last of the great dragons to have lived. They were capable of destroying cities in a single flight by breathing fire and mist. There are two types of dragons, winged and non-winged. They had a very high level of intelligence, were able to communicate verbally and had a fierce passion for wealth, accumulating enormous quantities of gold and other valuables. Given that both kind of dragons were almost impossible to destroy, it is difficult to determine which one was more powerful. Hope you enjoyed this most powerful species of monsters in Middle-earth video. Soon I'll be making a video of the most powerful creatures by individual character names. Like and subscribe, until the next time, on Middle-earth Invader.